The game is Vikings, Scourge of the North. Rurik. Rurik was a Viking or Varangian prince. Rurik came with his two brothers and a large retinue, Drusina, and became ruler of the city and region of Novgorod. Some historians think that Rurik came from the Scandinavian peninsula or from Jutland, now in Denmark, and seized the town of Ladaga on Lake Ladaga. Rurik, according to the 12th century primary chronicle, was a Varangian chieftain of the Rus, who in the year 862 gained control of Ladoga and built Novgorod in the same year. He is said to have died in 879 AD. His house was a Rurik dynasty and his successor was Oleg of Novgorod. According to historical evidence, Rurik started in or near the Scandinavian countries of Denmark, or in this case, Denmark. He has accepted, or his saga will begin with, the Heimskringla. He will get nine cards and be able to perform nine voyages. He also starts with ten gold, um, but he has found an extra piece <clears throat> of treasury which uh, his ancestors have buried, so he will get some extra gold. This is not a rule in the game. This is one that I just came up with because uh, the game is hard enough to play as it is, and your resources are quite limited at the beginning. So I roll a d6, have it, and that is the number of extra gold points you will start with. As you can see on the right hand of the card, the Saga card, he starts with 10. So basically I rolled and he gained an extra one, so he starts with 11. With these gold points you can buy extra units, such as house car Huskarls, house carls, whatever, uh, long ships, berserkers, that type of thing, if you meet certain requirements. <clears throat> anyway, and he has nine voyages. That's basically the number of turns he has to complete his objectives, which are to build three settlements, including at least one in a trading center, one warrior kingdom, and one fortress. Also, he must, un he must uh, discover two quests, and these are quests, like right here, if he lands forces there, there, and several other places, that's performing a quest. So, Rurik has decided that yes, he will do the Heimskringla saga. So, we will see where he starts off at. As I said, he starts off in Denmark. Rurik has decided that his objective is to build three settlements, including one, at least one, on a trading center, one in a warrior kingdom, and one in a fortress area. On the map, this would be a trading center. Let's see, over here in Paris would be a fortress, and over here in Wessex would be a warrior kingdom. So he must build um, a settlement in any three hex or any three spaces. However, they must all meet the requirements that I just uh, mentioned. And <clears throat> if he wished to go down here to the trading uh, center, he could uncover these two quests and then meet his quest objectives. Uh, Rurik, being an adventurous type, will most likely take his ships to this area, go down to Vindland, and then down to Frankreich, thereby settling <clears throat> at least Frankreich. Then he will make, he will consider going back up into the, um, uh, what is the sea? Well, whatever it is in today's world, they're calling it the Ostersaltet. Um, and he will probably go up to Neva Ladoga, Ladoga, 
and then down to home guard and take on this warrior nation right over here that will satisfy his taking of a fortress um, a trading kingdom and a, war a warrior kingdom a trade center and a fortress so after recruiting some uh, <clears throat> Uh, some of his men to join him on this mish, uh, expedition. He's re recruited two Huskarls and built two longships for this journey. He's hoping that he will gain some additional troops and or ships and primarily gold on this journey to complete this saga. So Rorik will gather together a force, which is any or all units in a given space. The space he's in right now is a home space, and it is immune to pretty much all things like uh, raids, that kind of thing. So he'll form into one force composed of two longships with the men in them, and he will move out into the Baltic. I'm going to call this the Baltic Sea because my geography right now is escaping me. And if that's not the Baltic Sea, then I apologize. Upon entering a sea zone, or any number of sea zones, you have to roll a die for storms at sea. You get a bonus if your leader has a plus sign on his counter. And Rurik does. He's a four, he's a four plus. The numbers indicate numbers you have to roll equal to or less than to score a hit on an opposing force, which we will see here later. Um, so, we're going to roll a die, and we're going to add one, or subtract one, uh, and add one for each C space entered. So, he entered this C space, so he'll have to add one, but his uh, plus will subtract one. So, basically, if I roll a six, then bad things happen and we roll a three so nothing happens he makes it to the C zone and he can continue actually I should have probably rolled that la well it's only C zone he's going to move into so and I need to find out how far ships can move that's the second thing I always forget uh, you roll 1d6 and have it <clears throat> um, round up and then you uh, that's the number of spaces the unit can move into uh, C spaces however we have here and here are two coastal towns they're not the same as a C space so I'm guessing I don't have to mess with that uh, at the moment uh, the lowest die roll I could have rolled is a one so there's no way they could not have made it into that C zone um, the ships will land, make landfall here in Vindland. Not to be confused with uh, Daneland, Svealand, Svealand, and or Norge. So they're going to land here in Vindland, and they are going to draw a voyage card. Voyage cards can be good, they can be bad. So we're going to draw one and see what we come up with. We come up with a hostile force. Well, this isn't going to be good for any of us. So, the hostile force, go to combat procedure for the adventuring force. If I win, I get one voyage card. Or you lose, I get one voyage card or two gold. So that's if I can defeat this hostile force. The other thing is, any hex that has. Well, I should have drawn. drawn yeah, that is my voyage card. You draw a voyage card, you encounter the voyage card, then if it's a quest space, you start another combat and once that's over you can claim the uh, the quest um, the quest here these quest markers are not the same as your overall um, saga um, card 
It's listed on them. It's a whole separate deal. But first of all, we're going to have to fight this hostile force uh, in Vindland. Vindaland, whatever. Vindland. Before we can proceed. Okay, how you fight a battle is you take a D6, have it, <clears throat> have it round up, and that is the number of hostile units that you will have to fight. Um... Voyage cards and pulling another card before you encounter a, a quest are the main time main times that you will encounter a hostile force to fight. They are red and not pink, even though my lighting <clears throat> seems to think they're pink. So what we have is we have a fleet and one ground unit in uh, Vindland defending the area apparently and on the other side of course we have uh, Rurik and his two house corals and his two fleets combat is done this way you'll roll for tactical advantage and you will add any pluses to the die roll if the if you have an, uh, if you have any extra so basically this is a four plus and eric uh, rurik is a four plus so those two bonuses will cancel out so it'll just be straight die the black die will be for the hostile force and the white die will be for uh, rurik's force combat is done by putting the largest combat factor for the hostile force at the top and you work your way down so it'd be like four, three, two, one, if you had those forces. The Vikings can, can position their forces in any way they want, plus, uh, um, yeah, they can put their forces. Any excess can attack any other unit. The Vikings do not have to attack the top unit. Um, I rolled the die. It came up with two hostile units, so like I say, these units are protecting uh, Vindland at the moment. So we're going to roll the die and find out who has tactical initiative. They'll get to fire first, then if they eliminate somebody, they can't fire back. Kind of a routine. So we roll six for the Vikings, and we roll six for the hostile force. And in the case of ties, I think we roll again. Let me double check that. Side with a higher total. If the net die rolls are tied, the Vikings have the tactical edge. So we have the tactical edge and we can fire first. Well, we will then take Eric versus the fleet. Eric's force will attack. Eric's force will attack, or Eric and his warband will attack the fleet. Basically, Eric will fire at their number one unit. It's going to be four versus four. There is no bonus to the die. And Eric, of course, rolls a six. Rurik, I'm sorry. Rurik, not Eric. Eric's another Viking that you can draw randomly. I played him a lot at the first first couple games so I'm so used to saying Eric anyway it's Rurik and he fires and misses now it is their fleet versus a house Carl I know they're they look spelt differently but I'm used to calling them house Carl so if that's not the correct term then I apologize so the fleet four or less like I say the bonus doesn't count except in tactical advantage and uh, storms at sea, and maybe a couple other things. All right, well, they roll a three, which will eliminate the first house, Carl. That's round one. <clears throat> units can be shifted and repositioned, except, of course, for the uh, hostile units. They stay pretty much where they are. Um, I don't think we roll again for the tactical edge. Now, let me see what happens on the second round here real quick.
Second round of battle if both sides have surviving units. Second round of battle begins. This repeats the procedure for the first round. Maintain who had the tactical edge. So the Vikings get to go again. Well, Rurik is going to fire on their fleet. <clears throat> His band is going to try to board and destroy the fleet. And what do you know? He rolls a three. He succeeds. So the fleet is destroyed. That will help out a lot. Let's we'll see. Uh, the fleet will get to fire back at House, Har uh, House Carl, needing a one. He gets a five. Okay, Rurik has already attacked, so we will attack with the House Carl. Needs a three or less. And he rolls a one. So we defeat the hostile force. And what do we get? Win, lose. Whether we win or lose, we get one voyage card or two gold. Well, I'm going to take the two. I need gold if I'm going to settle. Although Rurik builds settlements at a cost of one gold each. Uh, the more gold I get, the better. Win lose. If your force wins the battle, certain cards award a number of additional voyages or edit points or gold. If your force loses the battle, certain cards deduct a number of your voyage cards, edit point, points or gold. So, um, we win and we will take two gold. That would be a drag if you had to lose a voyage card. That shortens the game. So, up there in the glare, I'm going to add two gold. That gives me three. That gives me enough to settle three, uh, <clears throat> make three settlements. So I'll put the units back, uh, and we will encounter the quest, which will be very much like we just did. Having successfully fought off the hostile forces in Vindland, Rurik and the remainder of his men decide to investigate rumors of a trading center, or not a trading center, but decide to investigate rumors of a Silk Road terminus in uh, Vindland. Knowing a little about the uh, wealth of the Silk Road from other travelers in the south, he knows that he can gain the number of voyage cards equal to his current Edda. Well, his current Edda is zero. I always start off with Edda of zero. And at the moment, we have zero. So, I guess it will do him no good to encounter this, uh, encounter this Silk Road, um, terminus where the Silk Road ends. And he will just basically gain gain a quest for it, regardless of whether or not he can uh, take profit by it. So we'll just leave that open there. And Eric, somewhat disappointed, although excited about winning the battle, he's disappointed by gaining nothing for it except a little bit of gold off of the... Uh, hostile horde that he had to fight. So, his next plan then is to go south into Frankreich, Frankreich and attempt to take over the trading center there. If he can do that, <clears throat> he will get, what will he get? takes over the training center, he will get gold. I don't know how much. I think he roll a die, and that's the number of gold you get. So his uh, his goal is definitely to go down to Frank Reich and uh, try to take control of it and gain the gold that's there. Just want to clear up a couple things before we move on to turn two. 
or the next voyage segment. Um, the ship that we battled here in Vindland. Uh, what was the rules again? Should not have been there. We should have pulled another hostile unit. But let me double check that. Also, you can portage units. This green line from Vindland to Frank, uh, Frankreich has a green line. That means you can portage your ships and move one space into a uh, Frank Reich. Frank Reich. Keep thinking of Frank Reich. Oh, right. Uh, anyway, um, Frank Reich. See, an elite fleet provides the elite symbol only in sea or river space. So I, that's a coastal space. So, this area here would have been a coastal space, so I really shouldn't have fought him there. I could have fought him in the sea space, which is the white areas with circles, like right here. Or I could have fought him in a river space, like right here. But I could not have, I should not have fought him in Vindland, so I'm not going to make any changes to that. But I have to remember that in the future, that... Ships can only fight in a river or um, sea space. So I'm going to wrap this video up here and we will proceed on to the second void segment next time. Talk to you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.